Well, we need salt. The adrenals live on salt. Sodium ion pumps are every single signal in the body. The, uh, the Morse code of the body is salt, salt, salt. Um, so, and if we hear a carnivore, if you, remove, if you have removed carbohydrates, boy, you need to make sure you're getting a minimum of five grams of salt a day. Redmond salt is great. The point of it is that you don't want it to be bleached. You don't want it to be iodized because it's crap. The iodine they put in, the iodized salt, the Morton salt is horrible and it's bleached. So it's not an electrolyte anymore. The magnesium chloride, the potassium chloride, those things that are electrolytes have been removed. They have been eliminated. So that is not healthy salt. Since um, Theodor Kocher had a reaction to probably uh, a halide toxicity, he had uh, some potassium iodide in eight, what, I don't know, 1890 or 1910, something like that. He was a thyroidologist, who, a Swiss thyroidologist. So there, he was having a lot of he had a lot of work because the Swiss all had goiters, <laughs> so many, because it's in the mountains. So mountainous areas, there's less iodine because all of the iodine is washed down away from the mountainsides. So cutting out a lot of women's, mostly women's, goiters. And he basically uh, came out against iodine and the medical world because he won a Nobel Prize for medicine. You know, a few years later, everything he said was it. So you had people at the same time saying, this is horrible that we're not using iodine because they saw that it worked for so many things as a, as a disinfectant, as uh, you know, the thyroid needed it, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden it was, it, he decreed it poison. So then it happened again in the fifties with, uh, you know, Wolf Chaikoff. So bad science, bad science, because we have a negative state of iodine. We are, our world is poisoned with uh, goitrogenic substances. So people in Bolivia, people in my, my family's from Tennessee. Um, I have, I, I never lived in Tennessee, but I have uh, an aunt, two cousins, more people, all iodine deficient, they all had thyroid issues. Mountains of Tennessee, okay? So mountainous areas, I've talked to people in Haiti, a lot of iodine. I mean, you can just, you know, it's just, and it, it affects women. Michigan was a big area of iodine deficiency. That's a goiter belt. So you can look on Google and you'll see what were the areas of goiter belts. But the goiter belt is now so pervasive, not because the soil has changed, but because we have fluoride everywhere. We have bromide in our, you know, my chair cushion probably has bromide in it. Um, PFAs are inescapable. I mean, I have a fancy filter that says it takes some out, but not enough for me to be secure that if when my daughter's pregnant, I'm going to let her drink the water without taking a lot of iodine. So you can survive in this world if you take the iodine. It's your shield against these um, goitrogens. Okay, so there's two types. There's, it used to be only Jean Dugal's recipe of 15%. He called it 15% because it was 10% potassium iodide and 5% elemental organic crystals of iodine. So then uh, the yodophobic people, I don't know. I mean, Jay Crows is one of the oldest purveyors of iodine in the US. They invented the 2% maybe to make it less scary. I have no idea. The 5% is equal to 15%, the original recipe. Now there, if you, what's an interesting story in uh, Europe, I used to, I still do, but I used to have to provide my patients with iodine because you couldn't get it anywhere except the UK. The UK still had supplement companies that were selling 15% legal solution, Europe, nowhere. So as soon as COVID hit, I didn't have to make it for them anymore. Every single Amazon in Europe started selling Lugol's iodine, 5%, 2%, 7%, because it's an antiviral. So nobody talks about it. Everybody says iodine is bad, but boom, all the Amazons are selling it because it's a known, scientifically proven antiviral. The real issue here is that if you have a goiter and you don't know it, if you have a thyroid nodule and you don't know it, if it hasn't been diagnosed, the iodine will be like a kick in the butt to your thyroid. 
your thyroid will all of a sudden Matt might wait. Some people will have palpitations. That's like the worst case scenario. So one drop of iodine could make your thyroid suddenly start trying to work. It's limping and now it's trying to run. So for some people that doesn't feel good. And then you have to do a detox process. Otherwise, everybody should should start with uh, the two two drops of the five percent.